Okay. So, who's ready for some analysis this afternoon? Huh? Yes, that's the reaction I like to hear. Um, so, before I really get started, this is my dog, Daisy. How's everybody feeling? Are you giving that like, fine, everything's fine. It's just fine. <laughs> um, so hopefully we'll be really fine by the time we're, we're done with today. For um, the next hour, a little under an hour, what we're going to be going through are um, helping you identify HAI reports that will help complement the SIRs that you're already obtaining from NHSN. We'll also do a little bit of interpretation of SIRs rates and other summarized event level data. Um, so I'm not going to go into risk adjustment methods and models that are specific to HAIs. We're going to take a different approach to this because I know my other colleagues on the analytics team, they're going into specific details about HAI models and um, adjustment. And then we're going to spend a good amount of time on the NHSN statistics calculator. And that's an incredibly powerful tool that you can use in your hospital when you're looking to see if you've made any improvements or if you've had significant increases um, in a particular area over time. So as it relates to analysis, we've covered a few things so far. It is still early in the week. We've got a lot more data analysis to go, but already you've learned about data quality and internal validation, some general tips for using um, HAI reports, um, the TAC reports, and then uh, device-associated HAI analysis. And with all of this, there's been a lot of talks about SIRs and benchmarks and models and rates and um, p-values and all of that. And so we'll focus a little bit on what you've heard already, but then take it a step further. And really what I hope we can do is um, help you um, understand how to really build a story with um, the data that's in NHSN. And we're going to cover a lot of these types of reports in the next hour, but not all of them. Um, but I put this here as something to kind of help spark some ideas for your own facilities data on the various reports that are in NHSN to help you with that. So let's get started first looking at event level data. So I'm going to be giving you some, basically some helpful tips on things that you may not be aware are available for your use. Um, but keep in mind that everything you enter into NHSN can be obtained back out through the analysis functionality. So these are just some ideas. I could probably spend hours upon hours going through every single uh, detail, but nobody wants that. So uh, today, uh, so for this, um, what I'm showing here is an example of using time between admission and event. NHSN will calculate the number of days from the patient admission date to the event date with the admission date um, being day one. And so um, if you're interested in doing something similar for lab ID data, we have a slightly different variable because for that we're looking at specimen collection date and that's the um, that's the information that's used as opposed to event date. I have included the um, variable name up there as well as the label that's given to it. So um, that is always available to you in your line list and could be incredibly helpful to you. You could also um, gather additional or, I'm sorry, obtain additional information. If your hospital opts to enter the device insertion date for your device associated HAIs. It is an optional field, but if you do that, you can also get days from device insertion to event. So you can get that information from NHSN if you've reported it out. And then if you're interested, of course, in getting an average of the number of days from admission to event, what you could do is actually export the line listing into an Excel format or other sort of format that will help you um, uh, obtain additional calculations. Okay, 
So next I'm showing something very similar, but this instead is your surgical site infection data. Um, I've included just a little bit of information here, really. I know it looks like a lot, but um, with SSI data, you can actually get a, a lot more patient-specific information. I'll explain that in a moment. But for here, we include something similar to the previous slide where we're looking at number of days from procedure to event, uh, where the procedure date is day one. Um, and then I've, for this, I've also included other information regarding the diagnosis of the SSI, such as when it was detected, if a physician diagnosed it, and if any pathogens were identified. But I also want to remind you that... Um, as you know, um, the denominator for SSI data is the procedure record. And um, if your facility is reporting SSI data, then you have to report a record for every patient that underwent that procedure category in your hospital for that time period. So if you're running an SSI line list, you can actually add all of those procedure level risk factors to your line list if you wanted to. So if I wanted to see the wound class for any of these cases, the surgeon, the, um, the procedure duration, any of that can be added with my event level data as well. Okay, going on more event level data, pathogen level information. So um, what I would encourage you all to think about if you haven't already are frequency tables. Frequency tables, um, I always feel are kind of an underutilized option within our reports. And what's really great about those is that they will count your records for you that meet the criteria that you specify. Um, this, what I'm showing on the screen is a very simplistic view. It's basically a list of all of the pathogens that have been reported with HAIs in my example hospital. And so it's also giving me a total percent. So in that first row, I have Acinetobacter baumani, And so I can see I had three infections reported with that pathogen, okay? Again, I could export these data into Excel or another format and do some additional manipulation. Maybe I wanted to create charts to use with these data, um, but it can be really helpful and keep you from having to like manually count through a line list. Um, this will do all of this for you. You could also um, make specifications by a particular unit, a type of HAI, a time period, whatever is important for you and for the type of data you're analyzing. Similar to pathogen level um, information with our events is also the HAI antimicrobial resistance data. Um, if I can just get a show of hands, how many people have run the HAI antimicrobial resistant reports? Okay, just a few. Good. So that means that I'm hoping that at the end of this week, when you get back to work next week, um, that you'll take a look at these reports. These reports include data from the HAIs that have re been reported through your device associated module and procedure associated module. So these do not include your lab ID events, um, MDRO infection surveillance, or if your hospital is reporting antimicrobial resistance data through our AUR option, um, then uh, those data are not included in these three um, reports either. This has just been what's reported with your CLABSI, your CAUDI, your VAE, and your SSI. We do have um, select phenotypes that are included in here, and we have defined them on our website. So those are available. The phenotypes include, but are certainly not limited to things like MRSA, CRE with all types of CRE combined, CRE per organism. So you can get um, uh, carbapenem resistant E. coli, VRE, et cetera. So um, I think there are 13 phenotypes um, identified through these reports. So um, I do recommend that you take a look at them. I'm going to show you an example of just a couple. Um, on the left-hand side is just a line list of all HAIs that are reported with MRSA as the uh, designated phenotype. Um, I could expand this line list if I wanted to, or I could limit it. But what it will give me is the type of event and the location and the um, information about when the event occurred. But again, I could expand this if I needed to. 
And on the right hand side is another example of a frequency table, very similar to what we saw a couple of slides ago, except this time this is really a um, kind of a cross tabulated view of my data. So I have the phenotypes or resistant organisms that were reported and counts by each event type. So I could look at um, all of the CREs reported, how many were a BSI versus how many were a UTI. Moving on to a frequency table, because I feel like there may not be um, as useful, or not as useful, they're certainly useful, not used as much, um, I thought it would be helpful if we walked by and um, went through interpretation of a frequency table. So I'm going to walk through this all um, with you. Um, but what I want to point out is that um, for these frequency tables, in the left-hand corner, um, of my table, you can see it's basically a key. It says frequency, percent, row percent, and column percent. So as we go through these interpretations, um, I will be able to point out with you which percentage we're looking at. For the percent, row percent, and column percent, you could choose to include them or exclude them when you run a frequency table. So if this is like, these are way too many numbers and I certainly don't need to interpret it all at this level. You can choose to exclude what you don't need. So what we're looking at here are CDI lab ID event data. Um, and I'm looking at the events by four different types of location for my hospital. So the first thing we're going to look at are the percent of events that occurred in my, or that were identified in my ward location that were defined as a community onset healthcare facility associated or COHICFA. So what I wanna do is basically look at my ward row at the bottom and then look at the column that says COHICFA. I could see I have two events and my percent is actually 5%. It's a row percent, meaning that two is 5% of the total of 40 events identified, or I'm sorry, um, uh, reported for that unit. And so up there in the column, uh, in the key, I've highlighted row percent. Next, if we wanted to look at a percent of healthcare onset events that were identified in the ICU. So here what I'm getting at is, if I look at all of my healthcare onset events, so if I look at my HO column, what percent of those were identified in my ICU location? Now I know I have seven events in the ICU that were HO, and the percent is 18.42%. That's my column percent. So out of um, the seven the seven HO events that were identified in the ICU represent 18.4% of the 38 HO events. Okay, next is the percent of all CDI events that are community onset and identified in the ward. So here, what I'm really getting at is the total percent, okay? So if I look at my table, I go to the community onset column and the ward row, I have 11 events, and that represents 15.28% of my 72 total events identified during this time period, okay? And then finally... Um, the percent of all events that are healthcare onset, that one's just a little simpler um, because I'm just looking at my totals. I have 38 total HO events, which represent 52.78% um, of my 72. So, you know, I know this is a lot and there's a lot of details in here, but I wanted, I thought it would be helpful to go through what these percentages are so that when you do use frequency tables, you have a better understanding of really what you want to include in your results and what will be helpful to you. So there, it's possible that I could say, you know what, I don't need all of this, but what I do need are the column percents because I want to know out of all my, you know, onset categories, you know, where were they identified? And that's what's important to me. Okay. Now moving on to summarize data. Now I know, I guess technically the event level data are that we just talked about with frequency tables are summarized. But with this, what I really want to get into is summarize data that combines your numerator and your denominator. 
So um, what I've included here is really just kind of a snapshot of the types of summarized data that have um, some risk adjustment or our numerators and denominators in them. So you can kind of see what the difference is between them. Um, so just briefly, rates, as you're likely already familiar with, um, those can use person time as um, the denominator, but not always. Um, and so when we say person time, we mean something like patient days or central line days. That's the amount of time that an individual was at risk or exposed. And these would also use a multiplier. So you're familiar with if we have a rate per 1,000 central line days, that 1,000 is your multiplier. Rates are useful for internal comparison. Um, so when you're looking at our HAI data, um, we don't have any um, uh, national benchmarks or national pooled means available for those anymore. So you would want to use internal comparisons. DURs are device utilization ratios. That is essentially um, the uh, proportion of time in which patients had a device in place. So it's a ratio of device days to patient days. There is no multiplier. These are available by location only. SIRs, um, you're very familiar with them already. Uh, they are risk adjusted. They're a scalable summary measure. And they are also a ratio as the name um, indicates of the observed to predicted infections. And with the SIRs, we do use a single baseline to measure progress. Um, and that's where the risk adjustment comes in. CADs or cumulative attributable difference. This is what Rashad and Katie spoke about yesterday afternoon. These are for the TAP reports. And it is essentially the difference between the observed and predicted infections. Although you can use a goal in that calculation to help you strive for greater prevention. SURs you'll learn about um, after the break today by my colleague Agasha. Those are standard, standardized utilization ratios. They're basically similar um, to SIRs except they're a way to measure device use. And then SARS or standardized antimicrobial administration ratios you'll learn from our colleagues on Friday morning um, with the AUR option. And this is also, again, a risk-adjusted scalable summary measure, but instead we're looking at the, um, the days of antimicrobial therapy. So, you know, now that we've gone through that, um, I'm going to spend just a couple of minutes talking and making a case about using device-associated rates and device utilization ratios. Um, so, yes, we do have these risk-adjusted measures, and yes, they are incredibly helpful, and um, we encourage that you use them. But um, uh, stratified device-associated rates and and uh, device utilization ratios can be incredibly helpful for your own internal um, assessment and measurement as well. So with um, rates and DURs, you can make monthly level assessment of your HAI incidence and exposure for each of your units when we're talking about device associated data. Um, can you look at device associated SIRs at a monthly level? Yes. In essence, you can if you have at least one predicted infection, um, which can be difficult to obtain in a single unit. Um, these rates and DURs can also be helpful for an internal trend assessment of your data. So it can give you an opportunity to see where have we seen some reductions, how has our device changed over time, maybe ask some of those burning questions for you. So that, again, can also be done using SIRs. And we'll talk about that towards the end of the presentation today, but it can be done with rates as well. And you may find that if you're going to a unit and you want to um, look at the data in this way, it may be easier for people to, um, to digest and understand what's happening. So here I've just shown an example table. It's quarterly data for a single unit medical ICU. And I don't have any p-values here because I'm not comparing it to anything. This is just what it is. Um, and I have my rate and my device utilization ratio. And I could see um, if my rates have gone up or down, if my DURs are tending to go up or down, but also how many counties have been identified in each quarter. 
But I do want to caution you a little bit. Um, you know, I mentioned that um, SIRs can only be calculated if the predicted number is at least one. Um, rates and DURs can be calculated as long as your denominator is greater than zero. That's a good thing. But um, be careful because if the lower device days you have or patient days, the less precise your data are. Now, what I'm showing here may not seem too incredibly um, extreme as far as lower device days because I'm showing 500 central line days versus a 5,000 central line days. Certainly those are very different, um, but um, it's not like we're working with five central line days. Now, if you, Technically, NHSM will calculate a rate if you had five central line days, but um, that is going to be incredibly imprecise because you have such low volume. But what I wanted to point out here is that both of these locations, while they have a vastly different number of events and denominator data, their rate is exactly the same. It's two per 1,000 central line days. Location B is going to be more precise with the estimate. They have more patients who are at risk for a CLABSI. Um, and so their data are going to be um, a little, little less likely to have variability um, in different time periods than location A. Okay. Um, you know, again, I'm going on making this internal, uh, making a case for internal use a device associated rate. So um, I just want to point out the key phrase of internal use. Okay, so we're really talking about making some internal local assessments of your data. This right here is a run chart of monthly county rates for a single unit. I've also mapped the device utilization ratios for this unit. Um, and I have just a 12 month time period. Um, and so this, again, this is something that may be helpful to you internally at your hospital to help communicate how your rate has been fluctuating. Um, but I do want to caution you is that this chart is not indicative of any statistical evidence of a trend. This is not a trend. Um, at CDC, where my colleagues and I, when we look at um, presenting data, we try to avoid using line charts like this or run charts if we're not also tying it up with a statistical trend analysis. So you could look at this as maybe patterns of your county rates and DURs. You can certainly, if you have a statistical package, um, run a statistical analysis of your data using time as the variable of interest to see if your rate is um, is uh, significantly increasing or decreasing over this time period. All right, so moving on to SIRs, I'm not going to read through all of this because I know you know this, um, but just a reminder that the SIR itself is actually a comparison to a national standard or a comparison to a benchmark um, because we are using the national data at the time of the baseline on which to risk adjust and um, compare your data. And so we, the p-value and the confidence interval that we provide, that is the statistical evidence provided of that comparison. So we're gonna move on to our first knowledge check. So I hope you all will uh, answer this one. Um, and for those who are participating via our web stream, you can participate in this poll as well by following the instructions on the slide. So true or false, your facility's K-Pro SIR of zero with a 95% confidence interval of looks like a period or missing comma 2.149 is statistically significant. What I'm going to do is hide the results so you can't all see it. So I'll give you guys all a moment to think about that and I'll try and put my mouse away so you can see the rest of the question. There you go.
Okay. So I think we will go ahead and I'm getting my mouse over there. There we go. Show results. So a 17% said true, a three said false, and the correct answer is it's false, 82%. So why is that? Well, the lower bound of the confidence interval, it's not calculated. It's a period. This will actually show up in your reports this way when you have zero events identified or um, essentially what this is, an SIR of zero. Um, so even though that lower bound of your confidence interval is not calculated, we can assume it to be zero because it cannot be less than zero. So therefore, the lower bound and the upper bound, they're on opposite sides of that nominal value of one. So if you remember the um, graphic that Prachi showed you um, yesterday um, with uh, when that, with that line, if you were to connect your upper and lower bound, um, and if they're on opposite sides of that value of one, they're not statistically significant. So the same would be true here. Um, we would assume zero on the low end and 2.149 on the upper end. Okay, so this next table, we're not gonna go through and tear this table apart. I'm really showing it here as another way in which you may want to present or review your data. Um, this table represents quarterly CLABSI SIRs rates and device utilization ratio by three different locations. Now, while the SIR, you know, you can get it for the entire hospital for all of these units combined. We certainly encourage you to look at them by individual unit as well in whatever time period um, is appropriate. In this case, we're, we decided to look at it by each quarter. But what's useful for this is that I could see where my CLABSIs are occurring. Um, and I can see my HEMONC unit has fewer than in my other units. I can also look at how my predicted number of infections are and how those may be contributing to the overall SIR for my hospital um, and the individual SIRs rates and DURs for this unit. So what I did is I actually pulled together different data points from different reports in NHSN. So if I ran a CLABC SIR table and I ran a CLABC rate table, I could use the information from both of those reports to put together this table. Okay, another poll everywhere question. So let's say you're asked by your C-suite, maybe your CEO, your CFO, um, your CMO for a national rate to benchmark your hospital's device associated rates as has been provided in the past. Should you use pre-2015 data um, and NHSN reports to meet this request? All right, hiding the results. I'm going to let you guys think about that. And when I say pre-2015 NHSN reports, I mean published reports. I'll give you all a minute. Just a reminder for those who are streaming online, you can also participate with us and we hope you will and respond to the polling. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and see our results. All right, 80% of you said C, and you would be correct. Congratulations. Um, and let's look at that justification. Um, and the reason being that, of course, is, as we know by now, there have been various um, protocol and definition changes that actually impact how applicable those previous national pooled means and SIR baselines are to our current data. Um, and that even goes all the way back to um, some of our older SSI reports. I don't know if anybody remembers the basic risk index that we had with SSI rates 
those are no longer applicable because we're we're having different definitions. And certainly the state of um, HAIs and surveillance in the country is much different than it was 13 years ago. Um, but what I've included on here is actually a reference to um, a report that we put out on the CDC website that actually um, calculates SIRs for 2015 using the old baselines. And what that does is highlights how maybe SIRs went down or went up and an explanation as to why that is. Um, referring back to certain protocol and definition changes. Um, and so one example of that is, of course, the county definition change. We had a big change to that in 2015. So if we compared that data to the old baseline under the old definition, our SIR like went way down nationally. It went to like 0.55 or 0.6. Um, it was drastic decrease, um, but it was due to the definition change. So if you ever need that as a reference or resource, um, especially if you're looking at doing analysis over long periods of time as a study in your hospital, I certainly encourage you to take a look at that report because it will explain all of those for you. Okay, so similar to our previous table, um, but what I've done here is I'm looking at the overall SIRs for my hospital for three different types of HAIs, CLABSI, CAUDI, and total VAE. But I want you guys to kind of tell me, what, you what do you think is wrong with this picture? I'm sure you already know, hopefully. What do you think? Did somebody say rate? Yes. So I've included a rate in here, and this is my overall data. Um, and this is essentially a crude unadjusted rate. So for example, my rate of 0.96 would be 28 CLABSI events divided by 28,220 device days multiplied by 1,000. That gives me my rate. And that would not be an appropriate use of this um, because we already had seen on our previous uh, table that the SIRs, the rates for those different units are different from each other. They're different patient populations. So this doesn't tell me the whole story of what's happening in my hospital. So we would take that out. Okay, I'm gonna talk just briefly about what I call tale of two sister hospitals. Um, we do get this question from time to time, especially in this age of public reporting of data, either by your state or on CMS's hospital compare. So let's say that you have another hospital in your health system, you're in a similar area, you're both reporting to NHSN, and you're looking at the SIRs for both hospitals and you think, huh, we're, we're very similar. We're similar in makeup. Maybe we're a similar bed size. We um, have a similar medical school affiliation, but my hospital has an SIR of 1.37 and I'm worse than the national. Um, I have a significantly high SIR, but my other hospital, my sister hospital is 1.42. So they're higher, but they're no different than the national. And why is that? And that is not fair. <laughs> Um, but, um, these, you know, these two numbers don't really tell the story. And so I would actually discourage against any sort of like, you, you know, you may want to statistically compare those two hospitals to each other. Like, you know what, I'm going to get a P value comparing 1.37 to 1.42 or, you know, I don't know. Um, we would not recommend that. This is something that's helpful to look at maybe how these hospitals are performing, um, but their SIRs to be compared to the national data and should be considered independently. We really don't have all the information we need to understand why these results are coming up differently. So I will tell you, no, it's not an error. Um, this is actually correct. Um, but that in the data and the example data I'm using, the, my hospital with an SIR 1.37 actually had a lot more data and is a more precise SIR, which is going to um, basically mean that I am more likely to have a significant result than my sister hospital, whether it be high or low. 
So I would just re- encourage you and remind you that the SIRs are really more than just a number. Um, always consider what goes into that denominator, okay? What goes into the number predicted for the HAI I'm looking at and the type of hospital I am? Um, what type of units am I reporting for? Um, as well as uh, how many SSI or how many HAIs have been observed in my hospital. Also, when you're interpreting data with your SIRs um, and other metrics, um, keep in mind things like any validation activities that have taken place in your hospital or in your state, any prevention initiatives in a particular unit or for a particular HAI, um, educational endeavors, whether that be you coming here and having a uh, more in-depth understanding of our protocols, um, as well as any changes in your facility. Um, certainly, we get questions from time to time that facilities have changed their medical school affiliation, or maybe they're taking on new services and have new units that they're um, including in their surveillance. Um, I do also want to talk for a moment about um, what is sometimes the elephant in the room when we talk about SIRs, and that is uh, what we like to refer to as low exposure, or in other words, when your predicted number is less than one. Certainly, we know if data are looked at at a short time period or if you're a small hospital, um, you may not be able to get an SIR because your predicted number is less than one. So what do you do in these cases? So... You can consider using rates for your internal purposes. Um, Those are still useful to you. Um, And yes, it's true. These do not have a national rate for comparison, but you can make a comparison of your hospital to itself. Um, You could also look at data over longer periods of time. But um, in the analyses that we've done at CDC quite a few times now, we've known that um, oftentimes, but not always, Oftentimes, there are zero observed HAIs when we look at the entire facility as a whole. Um, And so, you know, not having an SIR, or I guess I should phrase it a different way, um, that having an SIR and a p-value and all that is not necessarily, um, uh, I guess, necessary. Um, you You don't really need that in order to identify we have zero events that's good. Um, If we were to calculate an SIR for you with that low precise denominator, um, it would be difficult for you to achieve any statistical significance. Um, But just a reminder that if you have a unit or a procedure category that has less than one predicted infection, you're still, those data are still included in the overall SIR for your hospital. Um, Facilities that have less than one predicted infection overall are still included in our national HAI reports because the SIR is scalable. So in this table I have here, my uh, fusion category Um, has less than one predicted infection, but the number of SSIs, the number of procedures, and the predicted number are all still included in that overall SIR. Okay, so we're going to move on to talk about the statistics calculator. So how many here have used the statistics calculator in NHSN? A few people. Okay, so I'm what I'm going to do is walk you through some of these examples, and it's not scary. It probably sounds a little bit scarier than it really is, but NHSN does the work for you. You just have to know what numbers to plug in where. Um, And I hope by the end of this, you'll be excited to kind of take a look at your own data um, and using this tool. So what I'm going to explain to you for this are actually the bottom four options, um, because I think they're most relevant to what we're talking about. Um, Okay, so the first is compare two standardized infection ratios. Um, When you do this, I encourage you, of course, to use SIR data from NHSN that are calculated using the same baseline. Um, That may seem obvious, um, especially now that we're in 2019. Um, But we did want to remind folks, you know, whenever, you know, a baseline is switched, like what we did um, a few years ago, uh, we don't want you comparing something that has two different baselines because it just wouldn't be appropriate. You're not comparing apples to apples. With this, you do have to enter your numerator and your denominator. And you can get those from the NHSN SIR reports. And this is to be used for internal comparisons. 
similarly, we have compared two instance density rates. So um, what I mean by that is if you're comparing two CLABSI rates for a unit, or if you're comparing your um, lab ID healthcare onset incident rates um, for your entire facility. Um, and again, these are for internal comparisons. So you don't need a national pooled mean rate. You can just compare your hospital or these units to themselves. Um, you would not want to use that for, uh, for SSI rates. These are for incidence density rates. So remember, person time is your um, denominator. The other two options. So this one, this top one, I'm not really going to go into a lot of or any example for it today. Um, it's compare single proportion to a benchmark. This can be useful for your healthcare worker influenza vaccination rates if you just want to get some um, sense of um, the precision around um, your proportion, your vaccination rates. You can also compare to a benchmark or goal for this. And then the final one is comparing a single SIR to a nominal value. Okay. Um, and that nominal value could represent a goal. So remember Rashad yesterday talked about an SIR goal. We have HHS goals. So that's really what we're meaning here with that option. All of the options in the calculator do require you to input the values, like typing them in. Um, so you cannot import them into the statistics calculator. Um, but um, you can, uh, we do provide instructions on the screen on how to use them. And we use the same methods at CDC when we're analyzing and making the same sort of comparisons, as well as any sort of uh, comparisons that are in your reports. If you're at a large group at a state health department, a corporate group, or a HIN, um, and you have access to SAS as a statistical software package, we do have macros available online. So you don't have to go in and punch in those numbers for 100 facilities. Um, you can actually use SAS to run that analysis for you. So we're going to go through a few examples here. Um, this first one is location-specific county rates. So let's say your facility has been carefully reviewing your county rates in a neurological ICU, and I've presented the quarterly data for this unit. So along with this line chart of quarterly data, I also have my county rates presented below it. So you want to determine if a county rate has significantly decreased in the fourth quarter. So you decide to use the statistics calculator in NHSN. So what I've done here is I've gone ahead and I've entered the numerator and denominator data for my um, first quarter, and because that's the beginning of my time period, and then quarter four, the end of my time period. Um, I chose 1,000 as the multiplier, so think of that as 1,000 device days. You can change the multiplier to be 100 or 10,000 uh, 10, if you'd like. Um, and just... I do want to point out that you can also use this, in addition to using it for location stratified rates, you could use it for your inpatient healthcare onset lab ID rates as well. Um, so that can be useful for your own internal trends. And what it'll do is it'll give me the results as in this table here. So not only will it show me the incidence density rate, but it'll also give me a p-value. And this p-value is 0.0327. So with that, we're going to go to our knowledge check. Based on the p-value of 0.0327, can you conclude that the neuro ICU significantly reduced its county rate during this year? And so I'm going to go ahead and hide the results and let you guys take a look at that. <clears throat> okay. 
So let me go ahead and show the results. Okay, so the majority of folks, 83%, yes, the p-value is statistically significant. Now, I'm going to blow your mind here. Correct answer is C. It only included two quarters, and I will carefully explain to you why. So, the question is, can I say that I have significantly reduced the county rate during the year? Okay? Now, what our results actually tell us is that the quarter four rate is significantly different from the rate in quarter one. It doesn't tell me anything about what happened during the year. Um, it's essentially no different than if I were to compare quarter one to quarter two, right? It's just comparing what are those two individual points in time compared to each other. Um, so what I would offer up as our interpretation, our alternate interpretation here, is that the county rate in our neural ICU for the fourth quarter is significantly different than the rate at the beginning of the year in quarter one, okay? And I wanted to make that distinction because we bounced around a lot in this unit throughout the year, okay? We don't have any consistent reductions during the year. We just know that where we ended is better than where we started. But certainly there was a lot going on in there. And if I were to break these quarters down even further by month, it jumps around even more. Now, you know, one could argue, well, isn't it better to look at it with quarterly data? You have more precise information. Yes. Um, but, you know, when we're looking at these data by month, we're more likely to ha obviously have lower number of device days, certainly, because we're only looking at the data for each month. Um, but the data can bounce around a, a little bit. But again, I just want to illustrate the point that um, comparing just two distinct periods in time are not really telling us what's happening during the year. Okay. Comparison of two SIRs, similar to two instance density rates. Um, you can actually use these for standardized utilization ratios that you'll learn about soon and the standardized antimicrobial administration ratios or SARS. So even though it's labeled as SIR right now, you can use it for all three of those types of ratios. They are to be used for internal comparisons. So if you're asking the question, did my hospital CDI SIR improve compared to the previous year? Um, and what I'm showing here is an example of just entering that number observed. It says expected, it should be predicted, but it's the same thing. Um, and it'll give me my results and actually show me the relative ratio of those two SIRs and then produce a two-tailed p-value and confidence interval. So we're going to move on to our last knowledge check. Um, you have been asked to provide comparison to a benchmark, and you choose to use the statistics calculator to perform a comparison. True or false, you should use the compare to SIRs option. And I'm going to now hide that. And there we go. So I'll let you all take a moment to read through that and see what, see what you say. Don't be shy. Okay, I'll just give you a few more seconds because we've only got nine minutes left and a few more slides to go. Okay. Show results. So 62% said false, 37, 36% said true, and the correct answer is false. So good job. And I'm going to talk you through why that is. Okay, so we said false because um, the compare to SIRs option, remember, it's, um, it's going to be appropriate for internal comparisons. It's not really appropriate for comparison to a benchmark or goal. So when I say benchmark, um, I'm saying that with the assumption that you're thinking of that as what is the national SIR for that time period? Or what is my state's SIR during that same time period? And how do I compare to that? And that's certainly, we understand that that's an important question. 
But what we want to do is kind of have you think of it in a different way. So kind of disconnect the what the national SIR is from the value that it is and just focus on that value. So if you want to know, you know, I see that the median SIR for the national data is 0.851 in this table. This table is actually from our 2016 HAI report. Um, the 17 data were just published. Um, but what I'm really asking is, is my SIR different than 0.851? Let's disconnect it from the fact that it's the national median. I just want to know how far I am from 0.851. How different am I from 0.851? Is my hospital any better or any worse than that value? Because that's my goal. I want to be at least 0.85, if not less. And the reason that we don't directly compare two SIRs from two different populations, that's essentially what it is, right? The national data is a much different population than your individual facility. So we don't want to make a direct comparison for the two SIRs in that case. And um, just to kind of point out uh, the difference here is that if I had my hospital's data with 42.438 predicted infections, the national data is 26,000. It's over 26,000. Those are certainly very different exposures and they're not proportional to each other. So therefore, we recommend you compare to a nominal value. Now, um, in the sake of time, I just want to let you know that this is how it's calculated behind the scenes. So you have that in your slides, hopefully. And if not, it'll be in your results slides. I didn't want to give too much away when we went through the knowledge check. But it basically takes your goal and uses that to multiply it by the predicted number to um, uh, compare your hospital. And so... What will happen is when you use the SIR comparison to a nominal value in the statistics calculator, it will ask you for what is your nominal value. Um, that's the last, uh, last cell up there. And then in the results, it will actually um, tell you that it'll give you a p-value and say, this is your p-value as compared to 0 0.85. So it will already include that goal that you specified and can help with your interpretation. So for this example here, on our results, how we would interpret this is our hospital's CDI lab ID SIR of 0 0.906 is not significantly different from our chosen goal of 0 0.85. Okay, so in summary, we talked about a lot of event level reports that are um, valuable when you're um, looking at your SIRs. SIRs and rates can be used to measure local improvement. Um, and the statistics calculator uh, provides a lot of options so you can have um, significant uh, or statistical evidence um, to see if there has been any changes in your hospital as well as difference to a goal. I've included some slides for resources here, um, just to let you know these CDC HAI reports um, are, are useful not only to see how we've been doing nationally, but also to help you and see how we've presented and interpreted data. I think they provide an, uh, an excellent uh, resource and example for that. And then just last week, our 2017 National and State HAI Progress Report was published, so I certainly encourage you to visit that and then additional resources. So Daisy says, and I say, great job. She's much happier than she was at the beginning. Um, I'm happy to take questions. I think we've got four minutes for questions. So if you have any, please come up to the mic. Hi. Hi. Um, thank you for that. I have a question about comparing your internal units to each other using the SIR. Because okay. um, your presentation really did just sort of blow my mind. I okay. thought the SIR was replacing the need for a benchmark, but now it feels like you need your SIR plus a new benchmark, which would be the national SIR. Um, okay, so... Let me take a stab at answering that. Yeah, sorry. I, I know. I'm, sorry. I'm just very confused. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. I apologize for that. So um, there's, um, 
different ways you can run some internal comparisons, okay? The first was the comparison of the two rates for an individual unit, um, where you don't have a national benchmark, but you just wanna see how is that unit comparing to itself over sure. time. You can do the same thing using SIRs for the same population, whether that be an individual unit or a group of units, a procedure category, a surgeon. Um, if you're running to see if there's been a significant change in SSIs for the procedures he's been performing or she, um, or for your entire hospital. When we actually publish the national data and the state level data, we use this same um, comparison of two SIRs. So these SIRs, yes, they are risk adjusted. An, an individual SIR is a comparison to a national, but I wanna see how that risk adjusted measure um, is performing in an individual facility or a state or the nation when I compare it to itself. Okay. Okay. Uh -huh. okay. And then the last option was that comparison to a goal. Now, I use the HII progress report here because some people may use that as a guide to determine a goal. So if your facility is struggling with a particular event, let's say CDI, and it's 1.3, and you're like, you know what, shooting for 0.7 right now is going to be really hard. Is there another number that we can use, um, you know, that, that would help us get to a goal? But you don't have to refer to anything like this. You're really just coming up with a goal. Maybe your goal is 0.9. And that's okay. Um, and that's really just looking at reducing your SIR to 0 0.9. It's not directly comparing to anything that makes up 0 0.9. Okay. Okay. One last thing. Okay. So if I were to take, say for Cotty, and I take all the units in my hospital and put them in a list with everybody who SIR is above one on top and focus prevention efforts on those units, does that make sense? So you want to... you. Um, say that again. So I've got every unit has a SIR, for, uh -huh. has a CAUTI SIR. Yep. And I put all my units in order of highest SIR to lowest SIR. Okay. And then anybody who is above a SIR of one, I do prevention efforts on. Okay. Does that make sense? You could, but I think in that case, if you wanted to focus prevention efforts, you might want to use the TAP strategy to do that. Yeah. Um, because that's going to give you a better sense of okay. the number of infections for that particular purpose. Okay, thank you. You're welcome. I just want to give you some kudos about the oh. calculator. Oh, thank you. And I would love if you could move it just to the website so okay. you don't have to be in the NHSN application to get it. specifically yeah. to get yeah. at it. It's so much easier than trying to use some of the statistical applications that are out there. Well, great. So well, thanks thank very you for much. that feedback. I'll mm -hmm. be sure to share yep. that with my colleagues as well.